so no <laughs> okay so welcome i'm sue collins i'm um european environmental policy advisor for butterfly conservation europe and um was deeply involved in the able project that we ran to uh, improve the ebms in uh, the last decade and um and involved in spring and improving the EBMS. So we're really delighted to have some volunteers in Slovakia who are interested because Slovakia is one of our target countries where we haven't had a skiing so far and it's really important and we know you have a great pollinator network and we have to welcome Martin Hosek who's your MEP which is very very nice. So maybe Maybe you could introduce yourselves and then Martin, if you've got a few minutes to say a few words, that would be very nice. We also want to welcome Dravko from Bulgaria, who's our EBMS coordinator in Bulgaria and is running workshops and so on. So thank, thank you. you. Hello, you. Dravko. We can't see you, but. Yes, I have trouble uh, turning my camera on because I'm, I'm using my phone for that and it's okay. forbidding no me to turn the camera on. <laughs> so sorry about okay. that. So, yeah, Martin Warren, do you want to introduce yourself? Ah, you are muted. You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yes, uh, yes, I'm Martin Warren. I'm head of development at Butterfly Conservation Europe. So I'm involved with all, uh, a lot of the development of the European Butterfly Monitoring Scheme. But uh, back in the UK, I've also very heavily involved with our Butterfly Monitoring Scheme, which started way back in 1976. So we've had a long history of it. Uh, and we now have thousands of people involved. But uh, it, we all started small. And so I'm hoping I can help uh, you in Slovakia get on the road to gathering some really good data on butterflies. Thanks, Martin. Christina, you. Hi, hello. I'm Christina Sevilleja. I'm um, the coordinator, more or less, of the European EVMS. So I'm trying to promote the butterfly monitoring in many countries, mainly in Eastern and Southern Europe. And I'm in the Dutch butterfly conservation at the moment in the Netherlands. And I'm also part of Butterfly Conservation Europe, and I'm so glad some of you joined today. So thank you so much. Right. So Martin Manina. Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that I'm I'm here. I'm I'm I'm, I'm working like this uh, environmental specialist at one company, and uh, that opportunity uh, sounds really great to to connect my my work and probably. My next uh, patient, probably. <laughs> Great, welcome, uh, Vladimir. Hello, my name is Vladimir Simurka. Hi. Sorry, I have no camera. Uh, mm -hmm. What about me? I'm 54, 54 years old. Uh, I'm a process auditor in an industrial company, and I'm big beekeeper. So I'm interested in growing bees. So I'm interested also butterflies it's connected with bees they are uh, love all the kind of of flowers i think yeah great uh robert olivia robert robert you're muted ah the microphone yeah we can hear you now No. no, he's still muted. Maybe Thomas is ready there. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, my name is Thomas. I'm uh, uh, working in the office of Martin Hoysik as well. Also, uh, I'm not a beekeeper myself, uh, uh, but I was a photographer and I was taking pictures of bee bees and butterflies for Greenpeace for some uh, for some times so doing some campaigns. So I'm ha happy to hear, and I also I was. Uh, I was wondering what was contacting the volunteers uh, in Martin Martin's uh, newsletter. So Great. I'm happy to see you all. I will I will turn on my camera because my my child here is uh, jumping around. So, <laughs> sure. but I will listen to you all. Great, right. great, uh, Lucia. Yes, hi, I'm Lucia. 
uh, I'm from Bratislava and the butterflies are my passion. I'm photographing butterflies, monitoring for a few years, and I think we can still do more and more. Great. Great. Super. Right. Martin Hoshek. Yeah, I'm, I'm Martin. I'm an MEP. <laughs> Got a diagnosis. Uh, it's like being an alcoholic. No, and, and uh, I just will start going into my, my kind of a short welcome. Uh, and then I will have to, sorry, I have to run to another meeting in a crazy Strasbourg week. So this is how the office in the Strasbourg look like, looks like. Uh, it's pretty bad and ugly, but that is a beautiful view. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you, everybody. And I'm really, really happy to have uh, the chance of kind of bringing and connecting uh, people from Slovakia to this project, because one of the things I, I realize I'm missing is better involvement of uh, the NGOs, the academia, but down to, you know, just ordinary people uh, in the different uh, PPAs, so kind of the pilot and preparatory projects that we are doing within Europe, and especially those was, those ones which I uh, initiated, and this is one of them. And uh, to tell you a bit of the background is, I remember when I was uh, a child some time ago, just a few, okay, 40 years, uh, uh, I spent my holidays with my grandparents around Slovakia, uh, one of the on and places like Lipto or, or Spish, which you know, from the Lazaro country, uh, are uh, some of the most beautiful regions of Slovakia. Uh, spending lots of time on the meadows that were full of butterflies, lots of different butterflies, and uh, over the years, I noticed that uh, especially since I grew up I noticed that they're simply not there anymore a number of them have really been disappearing and that was just my amateur observation uh, and uh, having had a chance to uh, start looking at the issue more closely and after I got the confidence and kind of the the really trust from the from the people and became a member of European Parliament I realized that uh, it's about time that they really look closer at what's the situation uh, with pollinators and that butterflies are one of the areas we know very little about. We know a bit about the honeybees, but butterflies, while disappearing and being the beauty, also really have an important role in the ecosystem. And um, Actually, Butterfly Conservation is an organization I know from historically from the UK, from a friend of mine who uh, got a small grant for revitalizing a pond and making sure that the butterflies have a space to live there, uh, close to Lewis in, in the south of England. And uh, I'm really, really happy because I was trying to figure out how to make sure this project is also happening in Slovakia, this monitoring project. That uh, I'm grateful to all of you who decided to take part because, yeah, uh, it's showing that there are people uh, who care about butterflies. And, I, and, it's in, and I'm really hopeful that we, well, not we, you, I'll, I'll, to be very honest, you will be the foundation of the future butterfly monitoring uh, across Slovakia. And that this will be the start of not just awareness about our butterflies and knowing more of what's impacting them, but especially then helping to reverse the trend and make sure that they come back because uh, they fulfill an important role, but they are also really, really beautiful. And I think it's something which is um, just so pleasing to go walk through meadows full of all the different kinds of butterflies and you know that this is the right thing for the nature and for us so thanks a lot for finding the time thanks a lot for really trying to contribute and i i really really appreciate it and i'm, and I'm really humbled uh by you, all of you going for it so thanks a lot and uh, i'm sorry i have to run uh, i would like to stay but in this crazy agenda but if you have 
Uh, any questions that are to me that are not part of the butterfly thing, because you have the best butterfly experts available. I'm not a butterfly expert, and I'm not going to pretend that I am. Uh, you can feel free to contact me on social networks, email or whatever. You know how to contact me. Thanks a lot. And again, thank you very much. And yeah, good luck with the project. I'll be I'll be following. Well, thank, thank you, you again so much for your help. It's been really valuable and uh, we really appreciate that. So thank you for your time. Yeah, great. Thanks, Martin. Thank and you so got, much, Martin. We've got three members of, of your team here as well who are staying. <laughs> so I think Robert Oleja, can you unmute and say hello? Can he hear us, do you think? No, I think uh, maybe. and Simon just joined us, I think. So he could say hello, maybe. Yes, yes, now. Hi, Robert. Now. Can you hello. hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I can hear. hear. Uh -huh. I had some technical problems, so I came only four minutes four minutes ago. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. And Simon, hello. Welcome. Do you want to tell us about yourself? Okay, so I'm a student at high school, but next year I'm going to the university and I want to study systematic biology and then I want to be a zoologist. So I'm interested in animals and things like that and in the nature conservation. And also I like the ecological things like permaculture or other ecological topics. Right, welcome. So, I'm I'm very glad that I can participate in this project. Yeah, thank you, Simon. Yeah, Christina, you take it from here. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, if you have any any issues, just turn on off your camera. Um, at least we can hear you, and you can hear us. And yeah, for now you can mute it yourself for not uh, listening the background noises. Um, so I mute you, some of you, sorry. So let's start today. Um, so I want to do an introduction of uh, what we are doing and what is exactly the VMS. I think you can see my, my screen now. Yeah, my presentation. Um, so I will do this introduction of VMS and uh, what is the transect methodology and later uh, Martin Warren, my colleague, will continue explaining to you about um, uh, starting uh, introductory and butterflies uh, identification. So I think it's really, really useful. Um, yeah, from my side to start in the in the contest, uh, what we are facing, well, uh, Martin mentioned it, but I think the majority of us, we know we are in a current um, uh, biological crisis. No, we have a, a loss of biodiversity, and especially insects are declining uh, so much. There have been recent uh, scientific papers uh, showing that and uh, making, in a way, an alarm of we need to take care more of our insects. However, we don't have, we have not been studying much insect for a long time, uh, and in some cases we don't have long-term studies, so we don't know exactly the population situation. There are, of course, many, sorry, many causes of this uh, loss, and it shared between the majority of uh, animals in general and uh, biodiversity, so the intensive agriculture is affecting negatively, uh, land use change, so uh, converting uh, land in other uh, purposes and then we lost the habitat and of course climate change. But how we can research the decline of insects or where we can start? Um, we could monitor insects but these are the largest uh, proportion of animals in the uh, in the land so it's quite complicated to to monitor all the insects. No, There are many many a thousand of species um, so we need to select some kind of uh, bioindicators, no? like kind of a, a, an umbrella uh, group to make able to understand what is going on with insects. And for that, we use butterflies as an indicators because they have really good uh, qualities to use it for this purpose, to know how other uh, terrestrial insects are doing. They have a short life uh, with several stages that we know the 
the egg, pupae, uh, caterpillar and adult. So it's nice to know uh, the different aspects of this uh, stages. They respond rapidly to changes. So something happened one year, we could be able to see it next year, more or less on the population of the butterflies. We are well informed of their ecology and the whole life story because yeah, they're having many entomologists uh, studying it. And they are quite easy to observe. They are beautiful, they are colorful. So we can uh, record butterflies and identify them with a bit of uh, training. And in general, they are great in, uh, they are popular in the society. So it, that allow us to involve citizen science for butterflies. And now the, the question is which um, method to use no, to monitor butterflies because there are many different ways of, of doing. And um, we need to select a, a, a method that is systematic and regular for able to be uh, to produce robust data and results. So for example, here I show you in this graph the trend of uh, one species, Aglaia urticae, and how it's doing through different uh, years and the comparison with uh, 2020. No? So we, thanks to monitoring in a long term, we could know how, for example, this butterfly is doing in a certain area or region. Um, uh, with this monitoring, we could uh, uh, also evaluate different policies that could help and determine solutions in conservation for, for improving the butterfly uh, population. So which method we will use? It has been used, uh, the methodology most common for butterflies is transect, that is a fixed route. Uh, it's a standardized method. Um, it has just a few rules to use, so it's quite simple to train people on how to do it. Uh, for me, I think it's really important that brings people to nature, so you generate the routine of doing your transect, and at the same time, it provides us uh, really good uh, results. I will explain more about the, the transect, but first I wanted to, um, uh, to say something about the history of uh, the, the, the transect, how everything started. The first uh, butterfly monitoring scheme started in the 17th in United Kingdom, by this uh, person, Ernie Pollard, who was the one deciding the rules of the transit. And I started to create several of these butterfly transit in UK. Um, with that, they created the UK BMS, the first one. And this uh, system of monitoring butterfly was quite popular um, based on citizen science and, of course, expert supervising and it was exported to other countries. So it's started to grow and in more countries like in Germany, Spain, uh, Netherlands, Ireland, or many others have started to grow the creation of this uh, VMS and the number of transits. So you can see on the graph in, in blue, the number of transits since the nineties, how it has been growing and uh, the number of schemes as well growing a lot. So in 2014, all the different countries uh, creating these uh, BMS, these schemes for monitoring butterflies. And in 2014, uh, Butterfly Conservation Europe and UK Center for Ecology and Hydrology decided to create eBMS, so the European Butterfly Monitoring Scheme, and basically to create the, um, a central database to where to put all the data together. And you can see the, the on the map the number of transit that, that are currently active or has been recording data up to 2020. So you can see that the, the network is quite big. We are in 30 countries, 32 VMS. Uh, there are millions of data since the 70s. Uh, and there is really a lot of yeah, big numbers, no? More than 10,000 transit in all these 40 years, so it's quite a lot. And more than 300 uh, butterfly species, so we are doing well. There are in total around 500 species in Europe, so yeah, we are we are getting there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, just uh, to show you that there were many countries joining, this is 2018, but we have a big issue that there were a big gap on the eastern and southern countries. We didn't have almost no, no transect. So in 2018, we got a European pilot project called AVOL. And with that, we were able to start promoting these butterfly monitoring schemes in, in these countries that they were lacking. So in two years, we were able to produce uh, to create BMS in the countries you see in orange, and we were able to create a, a really nice uh, support and strength of the of the network. While some other countries that they were recording started to share data uh, with us, and yeah, we consolidate the the network. And now that we are in the current spring project, uh, our aim is to uh, create this butterfly monitoring scheme in the remaining countries that you see in gray. Uh, yeah, in this case, Slovakia is, is part of it. So we really want to create the VMS there. But you can see other countries like Denmark, that is impressive. They don't have it. Or <laughs> Romania or Greece, that they are really um, diverse countries no? that we need to, to have them in. Um, thanks to the European Pollinator Initiative uh, that it was uh, launched in uh, 2018, it set up also the, the basis to, um, to put more efforts on studying and understanding more the decline of pollinators in Europe. And thanks to this initiative, uh, yeah, it was created this project, the project that we are running at the moment, a SPRINT, that is coming for this long name. <laughs> That's so great, it very well, but yeah, it's really long to say. <laughs> and basically the idea is to create, yeah, the it's going one step further. So not only recording butterflies, but other pollinators like bumblebees, bees, and hoverflies. And we have been doing for, for two years, or this is the third year. And yeah, we are putting the first steps to, to generate this uh, monitoring scheme where the butterflies and EVMS is, is part of it. And now I, I start to, to explain more how to do this transit methodology. So how is exactly how you can do the, the transit? So I just want to explain how, how easy it is. So just you can start uh, doing uh, soon if you want. Um, so this uh, transit uh, or polar works that is also called is basically a fixed route that you decide to have and, and to, to record butterflies on it and then you visit uh, frequently uh, during several years, we hope. How do you do this, this count? So basically is to, to walk uh, in a slow and con constant pace, so you don't need to run or, or nothing, just to, to walk normally and count all the butterflies that you have in this imaginary box that I put you here, in like in this graph, is five meters above uh, in front of you and 2.5 every side no so in total is five meter of of white and then well every butterfly that cross this imaginary box you count it inside of of your transit of course you can stop so it's not necessary like you just walk uh, and don't stop never you can just walk and check if there is a butterfly close that is perching or or something but the idea is that you don't come back or, or look behind of a butterfly or something like that. So the idea is going uh, farther. All the all these rules are uh, defined in the um, in the butterfly transit uh, count manual that I will send you later, and also it was established in the first uh, this uh, the booking of the 19 with polars, no defining this this rule. So everything is is written down. Where to choose your transit? We recommend normally to do it um, uh, close to your house or to your office. So then the probabilities of, uh, of recording are, are higher, right? And also you could help, um, you could be helped by, by your coordinator. In this case of uh, Slovakia, we are just starting, but we can help you on deciding where to, to select your, your transit or what is the best uh, to place it. We divide the transit in sections. So basically, if there are different habitats, uh, we consider different sections. So if you have a forest and then later there is a grassland and the path change to asphalt, for example, we will consider each of them 
a different section. And then we count the butterflies per section. And we recommended that not to be more than one kilometer because we need to walk this uh, transit since the beginning in the spring, more or less. And then in summer can be quite demanding on time, no? if it's two kilometers or three kilometers. So better to keep it uh, short. And you can include, all, of course, the, the best areas of butterflies, but poor areas are also important. So even agriculture areas are, are also welcome. When to count, in general, the weather condition has to be good. So not a lot of wind or not super hot or not, not raining, of course. So there are some, some rules to do it. So the time is more or less between 10 and 4. But of course, depending on the country, it can vary a bit. So in the south of Europe in summer, it can be even after 4 or even below 10, before 10. The temperature above 13 deg uh, degrees and no more than 35, because we are looking for the butterflies are flying, no, are, are active and a certain outside of this range, you cannot uh, see butterflies. Uh, for the wind, we use the for scale that basically is some sides of, uh, of wind that you feel it on your skin or you see the, some uh, um, branches moving or trees. So then you can appreciate what is the, the scale. And also we record the, the cloud cover. So how much, how many clouds are on the sky in a percentage. How many visits uh, we should do uh, to this transit? Ideally, and the best will be every week in the flight period of the butterflies. What we understand um, that is difficult. So we also recommend it between in two weeks and 10 days um, to do the visit to the transit. So then the later destinations uh, between one visit and another are not difficult, no, statistically. The flight periods depend also between in depending on the country. Uh, I think for Slovakia will be from now, no, from April until September, more or less. But in southern countries, it can be even longer. Or we have people in the Canary Island that there are counted the whole year. So that depends a little bit on the country. If it's not possible for you to to count butterflies in all these uh, months, no, so from the beginning of the spring and until the late the summer, I recommend normally to group your visits. So if you only count during the spring, okay, try to do all your visit in a spring or later on the summer. So there is not a big um, a space. And uh, as protocol, we have to say at least ten visits per year. So then. Uh, it would be a really nice transect uh, with data. There are a lot of information to help you on how to identify the butterflies. Now Martin is going to explain very well how to do it, but yeah, there are books and, and really nice for Europe. And I'm thinking to produce a, a small field guide for Slovakia with the most uh, common species to help you. It can be used the, the butterfly nets because there are some places that it can be really rich on a species. So then you need to catch them, but maybe for that you, you need permission. No, we, we could discuss about that. Take pictures is always a good uh, tip because then later you can take it at home. And even if the, the picture is not perfect, maybe if you see one point or one dot or, or the color, you could identify the butterflies. And I also recommend, yeah, you can search your pictures in online platforms like iNaturalis of Observado. I don't know if there is one really common. Yeah, Lepi, I don't remember now. Lepi Forum, no, it's, it's similar for Slovakia, uh, where you could search your, your pictures and other, other can help you to identify. Um, just on collecting the data, I'm going to talk shortly about this, but I can we can do another seminar of explaining you EBMS uh, tools, uh, how to use it, but basically you can record it on your notebook manually in the field, or you can use the butterfly count app directly on the field that we, that we created for this purpose. And at the end, all the data we would like to have submitted to, to the website of EBMS. And this is a, an example of one field seat on how it uh, would look like. So here is the weather condition that I mentioned. So uh, the transect name, the date, the temperature, and so, and so on. Then you register the species per section. 
And then if you have any comment of the transit, like something happened on the on the sections or in the whole transit, you can include it here. And then later, put this information to the website. So this is the, the website, the European Butterfly Monitoring Scheme, that um, we have it available for the BMS that they, they wanted. We have it translated in many different languages, no the Slovakian yet, but we have Czech, so I don't know if it can be useful for you. Um, but yeah, in English, you, you can see everything uh, and investigate it. So here you can record your transit, like you see here with different sections and put your data. And then we have also the Butterfly Count app that is uh, for free to download for Android and, and iPhone. And it's also translated to many languages. You can search by scientific names or common names. So it's quite handy. We have a small uh, guide to check the uh, pictures of the, um, of the butterflies. And they even we have included uh, several lists, not only butterflies, but we have also moth, dragonflies, and bumblebees of Europe. So they are also possible to be recorded with this app and you can use it offline. And well, we decided for transit, but also we have a really important survey that is 15 minute count. So only counting butterflies for 15 minutes, but we will discuss about it uh, later <laughs> in another seminar, maybe. Um, and yeah, just I'm finalizing uh, more or less. Um, I wanted to tell you that we are many people, we, you are not alone. This is happening in many places in, in Europe. We are doing trainings in, in many countries to try to involve more volunteers in nature and count butterflies. And all this idea of um, getting a lot and a lot of data is for a really big purpose is because this data we translate it into um, butterfly trends. So we know how the different butterflies are doing and thanks to that we can create um, indicators of butterflies. So this is our most important uh, indicator, the grassland butterfly indicator, that tell us um, that since the 90s, we have been losing butterflies all this year. No, So this is a combination of all the transit, this in case in the EU and in the whole of Europe. And uh, we included 17 uh, characteristic grassland butterflies that they use the habitat to tell us information of how this habitat basically is doing in Europe. And yes, you could see there are a big decline uh, is happening. Yeah, sorry, I, I put it wrong, but there is yeah more people joining everywhere. We have uh, trainings and more and more people. Uh, so yeah, we would love to have a Slovakia VMS to be a reality. So to create it, this a scheme. Uh, we could start doing the translations of the EVMS tools into Slovakian. At the moment, they are in, in Czech, so I, I don't know if it's uh, really similar to, to Slovakia. Maybe you could understand it, but anyways, we could create the Slovakian. We will support the, the coordinators if they appear. There are possibilities already, so yeah, we will support those people that will coordinate them. The volunteers, um, also we will generate a field guide of the most common species. So as you can see here in this picture, we generate this material to help volunteers. And maybe, yeah, we could teach uh, all these transect techniques in the field, creating more seminars and workshops to, to have more volunteers involved in, the, in Slovakia. Also, I didn't explain a lot about the EVMS tools, about the app and the website. I can do it in another seminar if you want. We could arrange it online. Uh, I will be super glad to, to teach you. And well, I hope we can involve Slovakia in our great uh, family of EVMS and with the idea of protect um, butterflies. So thank you so much for listening. <laughs> I hope you like it. Um, and now I, I will stop sharing. And if there is any questions, Sue, you are muted. Yeah, thank you very much, Christina. That was a quick canter in English. So I don't know how much of that uh, you were able to take in, but um, it's a very good uh, canter over the territory of, of EBMS. And maybe there are some questions or comments at this stage, and then we'll turn to Martin about the 
ID issues. Might so, be worth just uh, saying that the on the app, which uh, really is quite user friendly, you when you start off your app, you can select your country, and then it only shows the butterflies that occur in your country. So that's kind of helpful because there are 500 odd species in Europe, and I, I guess there's only about I don't know 150, 200 in Slovakia. So it, it immediately makes your job a lot easier. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Martin. Yeah, I will share this my presentation anyway with you, eh, if you want. So, so I I can share it as a PDF. Um, if there is no any comments or questions, yeah, we could go to. Do you want to say anything? Maybe I would like to comment uh, the Czech language, Vladimir Shimurka. Sorry, Sue. Hi. Uh, I, I am without camera. The Czech, Czech language is okay, but the name of the species of the butterflies are different in Czech and in Slovak language. I already installed in my phone the application and the butterflies names are different in Czech comparing to Slovak language. Okay, yeah, so we, we can include that as uh, Slovakian names of, yeah. of the butterflies in, into the website. And the, re the, re the, rest, the rest is okay because it's understandable, but uh, the names of the butterflies are different. Okay, okay. But you have then... the Latin name as well, and so we can make sure that um, we... Really yes, of course, yes, yes. So, uh, do thank you. Do other, do other thank you. Well, Vladimir, do you have a list of um, the names that you could send us, or we could we can upload that quite quickly? Oh, what kind of list do you mean? Mm. A list of of the names of butterflies in Slovakian. Mm. Not yet, yeah. but I can try to find somewhere. Well, uh, yeah, Emir, also with pictures. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, if someone can provide us, with, you know, or, a list with the Latin mm -hmm. names and the Slovakian yes, names. Yes, to be able to translate the directly from Latin to Slovak, yes, and to compare. Yes, I try to find something. That would be helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I Thank will you. say to Christina or Sue. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank Maybe you. you. Lucia, want to say something about that? Or? Yes, I already have a list of uh, oh. uh, day butterflies, so it's no problem. I can send it. Oh, thank with you. Great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. So when we create the field guides, we, we have photographs of most species across Europe, but uh, Christina will look when, when you send us your list. How, how many on your list, Lucia? Do you know? I don't know exactly. I have a list of all species in Slovakia, so uh, I will I will separate it, uh, the day butterflies and moths, and then I will send it. Thank okay. you. Right. And for our field guides, some to keep to say a hundred species on the one field guide so that it's kind of four pages in a PDF. Um, we, in some countries like Italy, we have specific field guides for different national parks or different regions. So that's, that's something to discuss with you. What makes most sense for your volunteers, depending on where they are, is it around Bratislava or is it in the mountains in the Carpathians and so on? So that's a discussion we can have with, with you to make something really user-friendly yeah. with photos. Yeah, I think we can generate something like that more or less soon <laughs> this summer. So have it, uh, the material ready and they are PDF to everyone can download and, and we can print them also. So yeah. So if there are no any questions, should we Anyone go else? To... Or comments? Then we, we start with Martin, the presentation. I think you can serve Martin. Okay. Okay, can you see this? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, yeah, so um, I, I gather from your introductions that some of you probably know a lot about butterflies and can identify most species so this is just a very brief introduction really for those of you that are not so familiar with them i think what i would say is that if when you set up a transect or start monitoring it's good to start somewhere which is perhaps not so rich in butterflies because we're quite interested in how common species are doing as well as rare ones and so the one of the key things is to try and start monitoring near to where you live because then it's much easier to do the counting so we're interested in rare species as well but uh that's where 
using the app can be helpful because you can do some timed counts somewhere high up in the mountains but we're interested also in common species um so if you set up a transect it's often good to have it near to where you live so um it's quite easy to go and record every week or every other week anyway so i'm going to just go, give you a quick um introduction to the world of butterflies uh and apologies for those of you that know all this uh so of course um People uh, in most countries um, distinguish between uh, the butterflies, the day flying, beautiful butterflies and the moths, which are also beautiful and very colorful, but most of them fly at night. Um, so some countries don't distinguish between these two, but others do. Um, so you've got lots of colorful butterflies and moths. Uh, and these are some which include a lot of moths, which look just as beautiful as butterflies. Uh, and some butterflies are not so beautiful or not so colourful. And so in this particular picture, the one on the top left is the only butterfly there. It's uh, a skipper, which they tend to be brown and rather um, dull colouring, whereas these moths are very beautiful. So obviously one of the things you have to think about is how you distinguish butterflies and moths. And the main method is just that butterflies, their Latin name means clubbed antenna. And so they have this very obvious club at the end of their antenna. Um, all the other um, uh, shapes in this diagram are moths. And you see some moths have a sort of swollen end to the antenna, which makes it very confusing. But if they've got a definite club, it's a, a, a butterfly. A lot of moths have these very beautiful feathered antennae, so you can really tell those apart. So that's kind of one thing that you have to think about, um, because there are some very pretty day flying moths, um, which obviously won't be in a butterfly guide. But maybe when we have a look at this um, uh, guide to the common species of Slovakia, we'll include some of the common day flying moths as well, because we're quite interested in recording those as well. Um, so, um, so I'm just, uh, so the, as I say, the butterflies like this one here, uh, they often sit with their wings open in the sunshine anyway, and they have these very obvious clubbed antennae. This beautiful moth, um, obviously has feathered antennae, so you know that it's a moth, uh, and their wings often don't, they don't open quite as much as a butterfly when you see them. Um, so basically the first thing to do is, particularly if you can take a photo, is to check the antenna. And if they're clubbed antenna, then obviously it'll be in the butterfly books. Um, but if they're not like this one here, which has like a filamentous um, antenna, that's a moth. Um, so identifying butterflies, so this is just to say a very crash course just to uh, get you thinking about how to do it. Um, it. Starting off with just the common species is, is relatively straightforward. Um, there are some species that look very similar and there you'll need a closer look or a good photo and then look in, a, in an identification guide to be sure. But as um, Christina said, if you're in any doubt, you can always post these things on the internet and there's a lot of um, apps, so like the iNaturalist, um uh, website if you put a, a photo on it it'll it'll suggest what it, that photo might be but if you post uh, you know maybe we'll set up a group and if you post pictures then people can identify them um so one, one thing that happens which is confusing is that some the times the male butterfly is different from the female butterfly so in this case anthocaris cadamine is just flying at the moment it's a lovely spring butterfly in Britain, we call this the orange tip of obvious, obvious reasons, but the female doesn't have the orange tip and she uh, looks like some of the other whites, but she has this beautiful hind wing, which the others don't have. And, the, and some of the blues have a blue male and a brown female. So again, if you're looking at the male, they tend to be a bit easier to identify. Uh, whereas the females uh, or the brown ones are a bit more tricky to tell apart. So as I said, if in doubt, uh, catch it if you've got a net or take a photo 
and then share the um, uh, pictures on a platform and somebody will uh, identify it for you. There's a lot of people out there who are very pleased to um, identify butterflies either on you know Twitter. I'm I'm very, I do a lot on Twitter and people post butterflies and I post moths as well and people identify them. So uh, one thing to start off with butterflies, and I guess the um, uh, chart that Christina will produce will separate out the butterfly families because they tend to look rather similar. So all the ones in the Hesperidae, the skippers, uh, tend to look rather similar. They're small, brown or orange. And so they're different from, for example, the Papillonidae, which are the um, swallowtails, uh, which are big, showy butterflies. Pieridae of whites and so on. So I'm just going to start off by a quick uh, run through some of these families to give you an idea of what types of butterflies uh, look like. So to begin with the the, uh, the Hesperidae, which are um, more moth-like than perhaps some of the other um, butterflies. Uh, they're very small, most of them. They're brown or or, uh, or orangey coloured. Um, and they have usually quite stocky bodies and they're very fast flying. So actually taking photographs of them is not so easy often. Uh, they tend to stick to the ground mainly. So they're often found in grasslands and they scoot around on the grass. Uh, and you have to have a good eyesight to kind of follow them and watch them land. But they often don't fly very far before they land. So that gives you a chance to have a good look. Um, so this is some examples of the skippers, the Hesperini. Uh, uh, you get one or two which are very brightly coloured, like this one, um, Carthrocephalus palemon. Uh, and then you get a lot of, of them which look like this, which are the small um, black and white checkered butterflies, which are in this family. Uh, and then there's some orange coloured skippers, which we call the golden skippers, uh, which uh, again, have different ways of identifying them. So they, these are all in the same family. Uh, and just to give you an example, this is sort of to give you, so you have to sometimes look quite closely because um, there are two different species shown here. Um, and you have to look quite closely at the spotting in the wingtips before you can really identify them. But actually in this particular case, the hind wings look completely different. So sometimes you need to look at both the hind wing and the upper side. So here, if you look at the hind wing, you can see here that there are two different species. There's this species here, which have got no silver spots. And there's this one, which has, this is Hesperia comma. So uh, getting a shot of the uh, or pick, or look at the underside often helps. Um, so yeah, that just summarizes the fact that it's good to look at the upper side as well as the underside. And then, as I said, this group here, which for most of most people, when they start monitoring butterflies, these are the most difficult ones. Uh, but actually, what it's good to remember is that on most sites that you go to, there'll only be one or two of these species on there. So you won't need to separate out all the different um, Pergus species because they are quite difficult. So again, taking photos, putting them online is probably the way to go. But once you get to know a site and you start recording every week, you soon work out which one's present and which ones aren't. Uh, then to moving to some more easy groups, uh, the Papillonidae, which are the swallowtails. So these are big, beautiful butterflies, often very showy and conspicuous, um, often come to flowers and can be photographed and identified much more easily. So here's some of the swallowtails with these beautiful tails, uh, but these other butterflies are in the same family. Um, and the whites, uh, well, there's quite a lot of whites in Europe, uh, and some of them are quite tricky to identify, but also in this family, are uh, uh, this butterfly that uh, we showed earlier on, Anthocaris cardamines, uh, and also the yellows, the um, things like the clouded yellow uh, coleus species. 
So it's good just to think that all this group of butterflies um, are in the same family, the whites and the yellows, we call them. And there's just some of the Latin names coming up. Uh, so yes, again, just reiterating that in this group, they're the the whites. There's uh, this group, which is the Leptidia species, which are um, one of the few groups that are, is almost impossible to identify to separate from um, a picture because there's two or three species which look pretty much identical. And we tend to lump these together as Leptidia um, species um, group because they're so difficult to tell apart in the field. Uh, and the Coleus species, there's one or two very common ones that you all get familiar with. So just an example, so here's two very, very common butterflies. This is the Pieris brassici and Pieris rapi and Pieris nappi. Uh, so these are the three common whites that you'll see. Uh, this, the brassici is the biggest, has big black margins. Rapi has smaller black tips and Nappy has these very prominent green veins on the hind wing. So again, you, if you get a good look, you'll soon get the hang of identifying these. So things to look for, underside whether it's got the veins, also whether it's got a, a big black mark in the wingtip. And then this, this butterfly here, which I, you, you'll get in Slovakia, it's uh, Pieris manii, which is spread enormously through Europe. One of the reasons why butterflies are such good indicators is that they can react very quickly. And this one has spread, used to be only in the Mediterranean and is now right the way up to um, the Netherlands. So it's spread right the way through Europe in the last 20 years, has a very big black spot in the forewing. Um, some other species you just need to look out for on these whites, which are um, the uh, these Pontia species, which have this rather dappled looking underside, green and white, uh, obviously to camouflage themselves when they're at rest. And, and this one, which we saw earlier, the uh, Anthocaris cadamines, which has this beautiful mottling. So there's some tips here, like this one is supposed to look like a Mickey Mouse kind of figure on the hind wing, which differentiates it from the others. So moving on, uh, this family, the Lysinidae, are very small butterflies. Again, they tend to stick close to the ground, um, but they include some of these butterflies called the hair streaks, which have these tiny little tails on the wing. They have rapid flights, but they tend to stick close to the ground or around shrubs. Um, so in the, the families, there's uh, there's the this group here, which are the um, the coppers. So these are some of the most beautiful butterflies, uh, which have got these iridescent coppery wings. This group here, the Theclinae, are the hair streaks, which have these tiny little um, tails to the wings. Incidentally, these are actually false heads. So the idea is that a bird thinks this is the head, and if it attacks the butterfly, it hits this end, which is expendable because the real head is up here. And apparently this works and you can quite often see these butterflies with chunks out of their wing. And then the blue butterflies, which have these lovely spots on the hind wing. And there's quite a few species, which again, are a little bit difficult to identify, but with practice can be identified. So uh, one thing, just to, just to, an, a good thing to when you start off is that this butterfly here, Polyomatus icarus, uh, which is a very common and widespread butterfly right throughout Europe, has a spot here. It's called the the, the icarus spot, um, and a lot of the other butterflies in this family don't have it. So again, if you get a good shot of the underside, then you can soon tell these apart. And then here's some, an, another um, uh, copper butterfly, Lysinophleus, and again, some hair streaks, which have got the tiny little tails. Um, and then moving on to uh, the Nymphalidae, um, which is, is a big, big group of butterflies. It's about half the butterflies fall into this group. Um, 
and they vary a lot from being these bright orange ones which are very conspicuous uh, very common butterflies like this one um the peacock iglaus uh, io um in ashes io sorry and then there's also some of the browns as well in this family so it's a big group with quite a lot of different color forms this one's a, the most curious one of them because it has a, a very obvious what we call a snout or, or these are palps uh, look like false antennae sticking out the front of it um libithia celtis so it's a it's a unique butterfly to to europe but quite widespread uh and then just to give you some idea of these these types of butterflies uh the color forms some of them um have these sculptured wings edges like these two um these means that they overwinter as adult butterflies with the sculpted ed edges which make them look like leaves and then these ones the fritillaries which have these checkerboard patternings which you can get to grips with if you have a good book um and butterflies like this Meletia kinksia for example you look at this row of dots and that identifies it but bear in mind that if you go for example to a site in may probably only one or two of these species will be flying at that time of year and you'll get to know that this butterfly materna only flies in june so you won't see it in may it doesn't hatch until june and then flies into july and then disappears again Whereas this butterfly, Kingsia, tends to fly in May, and then you don't see it again until uh, it has its second brood in August. So you'll soon get to know that the time of year different species come out. Uh, also in this group of Nymphalidae is uh, a family called the Satyrini, which are the browns. Uh, also have this uh, butterfly here called the Melanagia galathea. There's a couple of species that you might get in Slovakia. But otherwise, they're brown butterflies. They're relatively inconspicuous, um, but they often sit still or, or sit on flowers for a long period. So you can usually get a good um, view of them or, or photograph. Um, and again, just to show you that, it, for example, one of the things you have to look at with these species is the spotting on the hind wing. And here there are two different species, one with spots and one without spots. And so you just get to use to which what bits of the butterfly to look at to identify it. And here's the two here's the two different species, um, both which you'll get in Slovakia. This one, Sinolympha uh, glycerion, which has these very big row of spots on the hind wing, and this one, Pamphilus, which doesn't. So just a quick roundup of these different butterfly species: there's the Hesperidae, the skippers, which are small and fast. Big showy papillionidae, the whites and the yellows. Uh, there's this group which has only got the one representative in in um, Europe. Uh, the lysanidae, which are the blues and the coppers, and the nymphalidae, which is a very big group, which includes some of these very common species. So, as uh, Christina said, there's um, some good guides. There's uh, uh, to butterflies of the whole of Europe. Um, but of course, that has a lot of butterflies you won't see in Slovakia. So uh, that's where I think producing uh, a guide or using the app where it will, will automatically select uh, the species that occur in Slovakia, that would help. Um, there is a downloadable guide uh, from the Butterfly Conservation uh, Europe website, um, which, it, which shows you the, how to separate out the more difficult species. Um, and there's several websites that with lots of galleries of pictures. So if you get into this and you want to really start getting to grips with identification, then these are the places to go. But I usually find the easiest thing is to put it on Facebook or Twitter and somebody will identify it for that you and that's how you learn. Um, yeah, so here's some of the Facebook groups. And I gather you've got a Facebook group already in Slovakia, so that may be the way to go and to start um, those of you that don't know your butterflies to identify them. So th thank you very much for listening. That's a very quick rush through. 
Um, it sounds daunting at first, but actually, as I said to you, most places you go to uh, will only have 40 or 50 different butterfly species, so it's not so difficult. If you go up into the mountains, into rich meadows, then you might get up to 100 species, so that's when it gets a bit trickier. But to begin with, if you look um, in um, most places, you'll only see a smaller number, and you'll soon get to grips with the common species, and then the difficult ones, you, yeah, you'll need to start taking photos or really looking in ID guides to, to separate them. But it's all doable. People do it right across Europe. And of course, one of the great things is, is that it's a fabulous learning experience and, uh, it, you know, raises your skill level and gives you a great interest. And uh, people go on then to share that interest with other people. So it's um, it's a it's a lovely hobby to have. And of course, a lot of these butterflies that you see um, occur just in towns and cities as well. So uh, you don't have to go so far to see them. OK, so that's uh, that's me for that presentation. Thank you so much, Martin. Yeah, it was really great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Is there any question regarding that? Yeah, I know there are some people that they already know butterflies in this group and maybe others that is the first time for them uh, dealing yes, with the butterflies. Put in, in the chat, she's put the um, Facebook group, which is great. Yeah, from Czech Republic. Yeah, indeed, yeah. there are several. The word you can use it for identification of butterflies. So yeah, any question is welcome, eh? and there are not uh, stupid questions. So <laughs> please, I do have a question <laughs> not about butterflies, but I just wanted to then ask if there is already some kind of uh, confirmed volunteer from Slovakia who would be willing to be a coordinator. Um, um, or not uh... yet. <laughs> I've been talking with uh, Lucia that is in this uh, in this meeting that uh, yeah maybe she is uh, willing to to do the coordination of uh, Slovakia so I don't know if Lucia want to say something about this Adam yeah uh Monica was asking about if there is um uh, a possible coordinator for the Slovakia VMS Mm -hmm. uh, and I mentioned that yeah, I've been in, in contact with you. Uh, yeah, yeah, we spoke about this. Yeah, I think it it can work. So we will we will speak speak about it also later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to maybe later when we finish the seminar, if you can stay a little bit and uh, we can discuss about that. Could we also could we also ask where everybody is based? So are you all Bratislava or? Uh, can you just put on the chat or tell us where where you are? It's a good question, sure, yeah. Okay, Vladimir Simurka, I'm from District Previza, west west part, western part of Slovakia. Western right. part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm I'm located in Nitra, uh, which is um, east part of the Slovakia, I think. And probably I got a question about the uh, transect. Uh, you mentioned that uh, we are going to choose uh, the transect near uh, near our stay where we are living, and uh, somebody is going to double check it with us, or uh, should I send it to somebody? Or um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you decide already a place that you have in mind, uh, now I can help you on that, or. Or yeah, Lucia, I will uh, explain her how, how to do that. But uh, basically, okay. if you design a place, I would like to do this route. I could help you to divide it in sections and tell yeah. you if it's, if it's good or not. So yeah, we will be here to, to support. All right, thank you. And, and, and like I said, it just it, we don't best to keep them not too long. Um, and uh, what's nice about the um, online uh, system is that you draw your route on Google Maps so that it's there and then any, anyone else could do that walk or or we can see where you've been and so on. So it's it's a it's a very um nice once you've drawn your map on the website uh and then it automatically creates a sort of spreadsheet that you can fill in. So it's 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 all very user friendly and once you you know it's like all these things once you start using it it becomes very simple to use. So uh uh, yeah, well, that would be great if you could start something. That would be brilliant. Yeah, all right, thank you. Super. So, uh, Simon? 
You are where? You are I'm from Bratislava. Right. Bratislava. Right. And maybe I have a question that uh, where, when I should start to monitor butterflies? When now? is the best time? Now? Okay. No. Yeah. Anytime yeah, now. now. They are starting the butterflies. I don't know how is the weather now in Slovakia, but I imagine it's starting the spring now. So uh, we will start now, I think the best, because also um, you start to get a few species rather than if you were start in the middle of uh, summer then you have many species uh, in one go so that is too much so if you were start now uh, then you will get a, um, just a few of species and then you can learn them uh, more or less easy and and we have an option on the website and on the app that uh, we could be in training mode so if you are not really confident with your um with your identification skills, you can be in training mode and then your counts are not considered correct until you don't feel so, so yeah, so secure, no? What you are identifying. So Simon, do you have a do you have a favorite place around Bratislava or two places that you would go? Maybe there is one nature reservation named Sure. Sure. And um it's a wetland habitat, but also there are some meadows. Yeah. So maybe there. It is also Go interesting there. to do it in urban areas because um, gardens and so on can host butterflies. So uh, as Christina said, we're interested in common species that are not very, um, they're in very great numbers, but we're also interested in abundant species in in uh, so better to choose some urban area than a nature reserve, nature reservation yeah both, both i mean i would i mean for you it might be worth thinking if there's somewhere near the university or something because i mean that might be a nice thing to do because then it may be some other students could carry it on in the future if it was close to the university for example i don't know if the university has a campus for example maybe but uh, anyway, well, I mean, that's the sort of thing you, you have a think about it now. You've had heard this discussion and um, see what's best. But I mean, the main thing is it's somewhere that's easily accessible, either by train or bus or car and, and somewhere which, it, which you can walk around quite easily. Um, you know, so, for example, your nature reserve, it may have a, a, a route around it, for example, which would be nice. And basically, if we have a scheme in a country, we have a volunteer coordinator and we help them with a little bit of um, support to um, help talk to the volunteers spend time doing that and train and the coordinator liaises with Christina and that's the way we we build up the network and um, so the the transects can be discussed with the coordinator or with Christina in the first instance and we can we're here to help to uh, smooth out problems and answer questions and so on. <clears throat> so it, 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 it starts small. I don't know, Dravko, if you want to say something, but we had Dravko is from Bulgaria and has been working with us for many years and has does transact himself and is involving more volunteers. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Sue. Um, I can say, um... If we could start a scheme in Bulgaria, then you guys in Slovakia can definitely do it. <laughs> um, it's our our scheme is uh, is very small. So and we we are far behind us any Central European country in terms of uh, knowledge of butterflies. Uh, so Slovakia has um, a lot more, I think, uh, people interested in uh, insects and butterflies and a lot more data available. So I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that uh, very quickly. Um, uh, but yeah, it's uh, what you said was uh, true. Uh, probably best to start small and, and not having, you know, grand, uh, hopes for quickly covering all of the territory. Uh, so for example, in Bulgaria, we have something like 10 transects. Uh, it's our third year. Uh, and there's only four or five people doing them. 
Um, so it's it's not like one of the big schemes in in the UK or or the Netherlands or Germany or the Scandinavian countries. But uh, what I think what, what's important is to to get the message to people who are interested and create this community of uh, support and and really get uh, experts who know species identification because I think uh, uh, well I mean. I've seen myself there are a lot more books uh, of butterflies of uh, the Czech Republic and Slovakia. I have them in my library, whereas in Bulgaria we don't have that. And for us, uh, it's been very important to use Facebook. This is what I've been doing. So I encourage you to do that and really get uh, experts involved in your groups who will be able to help people get uh, identifications. I've noticed that in Bulgaria, this uh, this has been very efficient in getting people interested. So you post your photograph and you have a name very quickly, and that's really important. And it's also important when you're starting uh, actually doing the monitoring, uh, because it's uh, of course it's important to have names uh, correctly put in uh, in the data sheet. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it has to come from the interest. So try to get the community to grow together, expand your knowledge base and uh, get more people involved. That's, that's the way I, I see it happening. Thanks, Dravko. That's great. And just as another example, in Italy, we now have over 100 transacts, but for many years, we just had you know, one or two people doing monitoring and they've grown the community both with volunteers and with contacts with national park rangers and so on. So that's another way of building the community of people who are out in the countryside as part of their jobs and maybe very interested in wildlife generally and can be included in, in this network so to uh, to increase the number of transacts that are possible. So can we just ask does Robert where, where you are based? Put it on the I'm, situ I'm situated in a, in a south of uh, Slovakia, in the middle part, not uh, the west or the east. So uh, near the Hungarian border. That's great. So we've we've actually got quite a quite an interesting set of um, locations. And I think that um, what we found in Italy was having people who were based in different national parks or different regions was really helpful in building the network because you, know, you have one person and then they know maybe someone else or they have a friend and that's how you build it with nodes of, nodes of people who are interested and um, contacting the, the central coordinator, which is an essential part of the process. So that's really optimistic. So great. If um, does does anyone feel that some um, they have any other questions that they'd like to ask us at this stage? Uh, not really questions. I just would like to thank everybody on Martin's behalf. And I don't know if I can if I'm allowed to switch to my mother tongue for a little while. Oh, yeah. 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 Sure, definitely, please. Sure, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I chtěla za Martina hrozně moc poděkovat, protože uh, vím, že všichni máme svoji práci a uh, že prostě toho času nikdy není moc, ale. Uh, Pro nás to bylo, nebo je to dosud takové srdce rvoucí, že to Slovensko je prostě na té mapě monitoringu takové šedé. A chtěli bychom, aby nebylo. A nám by to hrozně pomohlo, i co se týká vlastně ochrany životního prostředí a vlastně tvorby zákonu, protože to, to co vlastně častokrát slyšíme vlastně z národní úrovně je, nemůžeme, protože ještě nemáme monitoring. A třeba právě dneska jsem byla na, na schůzce nebo na, na meetingu s, s českýma ministerstvama a a znarazí na to podobné, oni vždycky referují na to, ale Němci jsou dál, ale Holanděné jsou dál, my nejsme, takže nemůžeme být moc ambiciozní a to bychom samozřejmě hrozně moc chtěli změnit. Takže za nás hrozně velké poděkování, že jste vůbec přišli a kdyby do budoucna cokoliv vlastně bylo potřeba, tak 
Víte, že na Martina se vždycky můžete, nebo minimálně přes sociální média se na něj můžete obrátit, ale klidně nám napsat nebo zavolat do kanceláře. Náš mail, já myslím, že určitě budete mít a pokud ne, tak Butterfly Conservation vám, vám ho dá. No a kdyby prostě bylo cokoliv potřeba a jim, že Lucia zmiňovala, že, že, že se tomu tváří otevřeně, že by byla koordinátorka, kdyby byla prostě potřeba podpory, tak no jsme tady. <laughs> Děkuji moc. Uh, well, very sorry, Sue, about uh, well and the rest for switching uh, to uh, to well Czech language. I switched to Czech, not to Slovak. Uh, I just wanted to really thank everybody because uh, well we appreciate uh, that they responded. Uh, well, but we don't take it for granted that they did. <laughs> thank you very much, Monica. Thank that's much, yeah. that's great, and we know language is really important. So um, we we operate the network in in English but we translate all the tools and everything into local languages so that's one of the first things that that helps to build the community of volunteers I just wanted to add that I work with the European Commission on policy reform so the um, nature restoration law which um, uh, Martin and others are are um, uh, promoting has a target to uh, a binding target to reverse the decline in pollinators and of course data is really really important to evaluate the achievement of that target so we in Butterfly Conservation Europe are connecting individuals in in their own backyard with the European endeavour and that's that's really really important so it's not just you're counting locally but you are actually contributing to to changing things at the political level and the policy level and and making a difference and um you know money to manage the land in ways that sustains butterflies or reverses the decline comes from the common agricultural policy and other regional uh, funds of the eu and from national governments and data is really really important in helping to make the case for that money so uh just wanted to reassure you that um, this is a, a European endeavor and your community locally is really, really important to us. And we're really thrilled that at last we have made contact with some people in Slovakia who, who might um, join this endeavor and we hope you enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one it's an important message, I think, certainly where, where I live in, in the UK, people often feel they care about the environment, but feel pretty helpless to do something about it. And actually a simple thing like counting butterflies, even if it's in their garden, actually contributes to this important data set, which actually gets used now uh, in, you know, quite a lot of circles scientifically it's used, but politically it's used as well. So it's it's a very nice way of of people contributing and trying to make the world a better place which is always a nice thing to do and often is a hard thing to do yeah and the grassland butterfly indicator is on the eu biodiversity strategy dashboard so if you google eu biodiversity strategy dashboard you can find the grassland butterfly indicator as one of the indicators for agro ecosystems so it it's in and it's informed by all the data that is collected by our volunteers all across europe and it will be and one of the one of the things we're aware of is that um uh, we we want to make the indicator as representative of europe as a whole so which is why we're so keen to get every country involved because um, we don't want to have the criticism, of, oh, it's just people in Western Europe, for example, that, that this data is only coming from Western Europe. So what happens is that when we analyse the data, we weight it according to the size of each country and according to the region of each country. So um, actually any data from the uh, eastern part of Europe gets an incredible amount of importance because we don't have so much of it so uh, any data is really good data and will add to what um Zravko is doing in Bulgaria and in your surrounding countries so um yeah it, it, any, anything however small is going to make uh, a, a contribution which we're very useful yeah thank you so much i think uh, we say all the really key points why we are doing this why it's important and we are so glad that you are here so if there are no more questions i think we should start closing no because we have been here almost one hour and a half so i oh, think okay. i could really 
Wonderful. I stole the one hour, a lot of time of you. So thank you so much. Um, I will um, uh, upload this video to YouTube, our channel. But anyway, I will send you the presentations as well. Uh, and keep in contact. If you have ideas for transit, please send it to me. And then we will see how to, to start arranging. Also, if you create an EVMS account on the website, I can help you with that. And if any doubt, yeah, we are here to support you. So if okay. just uh, Lucia and us, we stay for a bit, but yeah, thank you everyone. And maybe we can do a, a field uh, workshop in, in the summer sometime so that you can actually <laughs> get face to face and see some butterflies and walk some transects because... Um, yeah, I'm planning to go to really Slovakia easy. maybe uh, because I'm going to Prague in July for a conference so I can continue the trip and go to Slovakia, it's not a problem, <laughs> and then visit you uh, and do a workshop. So yeah, nice. let's, let's keep in contact, yeah. So thank yeah. you so Good much. Good luck everyone, thank you very much. And thank you're you very, very welcome to join any future ones. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank uh, you. Thanks. Yes, thank bye. You. Bye. 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 Thanks everyone, bye-bye. Thanks Monica. Bye. 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 Bye.